And too many miles behind me And too many trials to walk through And too many tears Help me to remember There's too much to get Yeah. 
Jesus says, Hatha means I take a chicken as rice to cook. Ek weer vol stal gehad gestrap. Al my onderkies was bedeis. Al my kinders was bedeis. Is dit die woorde dat om uit te kan kyk ook die dag as Jezus gekom. Hy staan sieke daan rug en wacht om ook sy kinders te ontvang. En dan staan hy dat daar hier kan wees. Die body in die hall en die wand. Die kaan en die storm van die storm. And he born in the corner of the world. He's born in the story of my soul. I was weak and blind, but very old.
Dit is de gorige beweeg. Hoe meer wordt de mens bewust van zijn kracht, van die gekruis, van die Heilige Geest. Ik weet niet wie van die was al nou bij de waterval geweest. Ja, bericht hier. Hoe nader de mens van daar die waterval beweeg, hoe meer wordt de mens bewust van die kracht, ja, daar die waterval geweest. Hoe nader de mens beweeg, hoort hij soms zelfs benad, net hier die mis van daar die water. Zo, vrees die Heer. Wat bezig is ons. Ons moet verboren nader de weeg met kracht en die teenwoordigheid van onze God, onze Heer Jezus. Heer, dat is de mooie Heer Jezus. Want dit waar de mens benad zal hoort met die Heilige Geer. Ons gaan hier die kwerkjes in het woord die waters toe wat val. So wonders kroon en so wonders kroon. Maar kom op, beweeg nader. En daar die kracht van ons hier in Jezus Heilig van Jezus. Ek hoor die waarde zo
Ik zie die liefde wat ze gezegd heeft. Ik zie aan die einde. Ik zal van blijdschap hebben. Aan die einde van die reis. Ik is les van mijn bikje te helpen. Weet je of ik niet meer weet van haar spons? Ik weet niet wie wil samen met mij helpen vanmorgen. Die mag van mijn zin. Ik wil net een of twee keer helpen. Vanmorgen die tegenwoordigheid van die koning.
say whosoever, whosoever will. Why don't you come this morning and drink of this water? The Lord says, I promise you pour my spirit out of your sons and your daughters, but you are also his son, not that he's so if you're thirsty and dry, lift your hands to the sun. It's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain, rain, rain. Hear the voice from the Father. Righteousness 
And he calls us to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain as before. And the threshing floors shall be full of grain, and the fats shall overflow. Fats, or other translations say oil, shall overflow. And the juice of the grape, notice it doesn't say wine, and oil. And I will restore or replace for you the years that the locust has eaten. The hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the crawling locust. My great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know and, and you shall know, understand, and realize that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I, the Lord, am your God. And there is none else. My people shall never be put to shame. And after I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see vision. Even upon the men servants and upon the maid servants in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Blood, fire, cones of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and shall be saved. For in Mount Zion... And in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape as the Lord has said. And among the remnant shall be those whom the Lord calls. The Bible here is quite astounding how Joel so many years before the birth of Christ had this vision. It's amazing to read the Bible and especially books like Isaiah and Joel and Jeremiah, all the great prophets, Samuel, Elijah, Elijah, many, many more. But here it's so accurate that the book of Joel talks about the end times and what will come. And you have to think about when it happened, where this man was. He's sitting down in his house. Was he walking alongside the river? Was he sitting in a park under the tree? I don't know. But it's amazing that how the Spirit of the Lord can come over someone and he can take a pen and he can start writing it down what's going to happen thousands of years in the future. But that tells me how authentic and how genuine the Spirit of God is. And one of the biggest attacks Satan has got against your life is when you, the Lord tells you something and then you doubt yourself. Hy sê vir jou iets doen dit. En as jy nog op pad is om dit te gaan doen, dan draai jy om en dan twyfel jy. En eindelijk wat die Heere gesê. Wat van as jy al die getwyfel het en wat die Heere vir hom gesê? That's one of the greatest attacks. Is to doubt your calling, to doubt your ministry, to feel unworthy. He's, he's so good at that. Because if he can't push you over, he will push you under. As he only can honor to stoot, and I'm going to hear the words. Come on, you know, I'm listening. I have so few tricks. But the thing for the devil is, you can also say tricks, Kim, but it's all to yourself. Here we find the prophet Joel talking about a threshing floor. And I want you to envision it and picture it in your mind. A threshing floor is a big open space. What do we do on a threshing floor? If I think of a threshing floor, I think of food preparation. It's an agricultural setting. A hard surface where in the olden days they used to take the corn, the wheat, and you can just imagine Hundreds and hundreds of people were hand-picking the corn, cutting it 
Is it a shekel? A shekel? What is a shekel in English? Shekel. Shekel. I'm doing the right. I know she's a teacher. I've got to be on my own. <laughs> Hundreds of people by hand using the shekel. The Bible also talks about the angels that will go out in the end times and they shall, shall take their shekels and carve this earth all the people. They will gather them from the north, the east, the south, and the west. They will gather all the people. The Bible says the children of God they shall put aside and the children of Satan they shall also separate them. A freshing floor is a place that people take corn to, they take wheat and then they hear it. They take the corn in bundles and they physically, today they've got more improved modern methods, but they hit it against the ground to separate the grains of corn from the wheat, from the mother stock. And they also take forks. That's another method. The Bible praat van hulle die koren uitgeslaan op die doorsvloer, of hulle vat een vink en hulle gooi dit in die licht. They take a, a, a fork, a big one, and a, pushes it up and they throw it up in the air and they need the wind to separate the calf from the corn because the seed is heavy it falls straight down but the calf wordt dan weer die wind gesky en het praat so met my vir ochend is dat die Heere stier winde in jou lewe hoe kan hy die calf uit jou lewe uitsky as daar nie wind in jou lewe is the method used here the terminology in the book of Joel, the prophecy, the Lord says, when I separate the corn, the, the, the grain of corn from the calf, I throw it up and it separates by the wind. What if there's no winds in your life? What if you weren't challenged by your circumstances? What if anything was just honky-dory and, and, and calm sailing and there was never any obstacles or storms in your way? I think you would have been underdeveloped spiritually. I don't think you would have had the strength that you have today. If you had cancer before and the Lord helped you and you're still sitting here today, there's a few people in this congregation. That was a storm. That was the winds that came along your life path. But thank God it wasn't there to destroy you. It was there to give you the character. And the Lord still separated the little shells around your life to expose what's really the valuable part inside of you. And here in the book of Joel, Joel talks about three things that's taken to the threshing floor. He talks about wheat and then he talks about wine or grape juice. See, on the side of the threshing floor, there is probably a parscape in Afrikaans. A place that where you stand in it, you would, you would put all the grapes in about this high. We saw them in, uh, in Israel, and they would stack all the grapes in there, and then they would jump in there. Of course, they wash their feet feet or just if they don't wash their feet it gives the wine extra fermentation and they jump in there. Oh dear, I wanted to wash their toenails, I don't know. But then they, like we did this morning, they jump on the grapes and they press them out. And the juice separates from the skin, is that right? And then the basis uh, would be sort of sloped to one side and there would be a channel and all the skins and the seeds would stay behind, but the juice would channelize and, and go along to be connected. But that also is another process. Here again we find the word of the law, separating the goodness from the skin. How many times has the Lord got under your skin? Ooh, oh, you can't ask that. Have you never been angry at the Lord? We all do. Certain. Who, who of you were a teenager? If you were a teenager, you've been angry at everything in life. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. You look at yourself in the mirror and you're angry at yourself. 
<laughs> I remember I was young and uh, uh, high school, and then you get these little white dots that we call them faces. And you look in the mirror and you just don't like them. You wish you would go away. And mom buys you facial scrub and all the girly things, but still you wash your face, still they don't go away. And it's just a time in your life called puberty. And but even when you look in, in the mirror and, and you hear your, your voice crack and, and your hair look funny to yourself, I oh, used to know what I'm talking about, do you? And you just look at yourself and think, oh, you know, angry at the world. But you see, Lord, the Lord God is busy shaping you. He was busy shaping you back then. And like in the threshing floor of any parscape waar die Heere na die wijn trap, dan is hy ook bezig, die woord van die Heere sê ook vir hom, dat is Christus wat die wijn pers trap. Maar hy is bezig om so'n bykie onder jou vel in te kom. Hy is bezig om so'n bykie uit jou uit te sky, want hy weet daar diep in die jou is goed uit. He is after the goodness that is in your heart. But let's take grapes. We just explore it a bit. How many of you have got a grapevine at home? How many of you had one? Or had visited grandma and grandpa and family members with a grapevine? Okay. The most of us have. And if you go down Margaret River, this way, wine region, there's so many places where you can go and taste, eat the grapes, buy the grapes, taste the wine. There was sweet wine, but there is also sour wine. There's good stock, and there's also bad stock. And the DNA, or if you want to put it that way, the genetics, the genetics in, in, in the wine stocks is so different. And you would actually get sometimes that uh, in the French country, in the Italian country, the Romans used to used to conquer that you get vine vine vineyards that's uh, vineyards that's uh, thousands thousands of years old, and that's why we we use the process of of of, of, of grafting is 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 where you take a good genetic wine stock and you cut a little stem of it. I've done it before. It's it's so interesting, and you cut it in the V shape like an arrow and then on the mother plant of the one you want to join it to you cut an open V and put it tight in there but you gotta cut it so the flesh is exposed you cut it with a knife and you can actually see the life inside the little stem that you're cutting in the green and it's just plain arches that are in the vessels the vessels and that is a so work and when you look at the the mother stock of the driver's snake that it works mooi work is and then he goes in the flees and flees and then he goes in with that he takes fast, like a spark he takes for those who but then he do the grafting, he takes the grafting tape and he make it tight so he just seals it and then he leave it for a few weeks and then if you want to know whether it worked you can see first the stem will go brown and die looks like it's dead but don't touch it just wait and then a few weeks later you will see little bits of green come back into it then you know the process has actually worked and what happens now the mother plant gives its genetics to that stem why would we do that why does christ so many times talk about the process of grafting. It's because he, he is the wine stock. And his good genetics and his good character and God's will is in him. But he also admires you. Why does he pick me? Because you being a wild, that's what the Bible talks to us even about, a wild, uh, comes from a wild vineyard. He knows that you can sustain yourself in droughts. Did you know that, 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 that the grapes that grow out in the bush, they are very uh, uh, resistant to drought. They can persevere at times when there's little water. They don't have pumps and irrigation run alongside of them. 
they, they got some very good characteristics. That's what Christ sees in you. And then He takes you and He grafts you into Himself, to the church, and He binds you. But that process where He has to cut you once again. First we have the grain, the Lord throwing it up in the air, the wind blowing it everywhere. You fall to the ground like grain corn, the hard poof on the floor. What are you doing to me now? Now you know you're throwing me in the parscape and here trap you and now come you by me. But here you must make an end, that's the same process. But then you start bearing fruit and you go, oh, this is good. I start the Holy Spirit starting to feed through me because when you graft in properly in Christ, you start to live, you start to grow, you start to feel the power of God coming through you. And that's why you should stay. But when you say, as you are in my blood, and for my son, I'm going to in act in the other, so I'm going to in the other blood. And I get it all of that. But also, why I mean, I want to say, you come with time in your year, and I feel you after you got to my. I was a boss. And church hopping. church But I'm a you do, but I'm a passionate and but I'm a other And like the fun was it only this point. I mean, art of the restaurant right here. So, but as long as you don't choose one that's not teaching biblical. Most of the time, people choose a church that doesn't have much pressure. If I read the word of God, Jesus applies a lot of pressure to our lives. But it's for the better. You have to make your heart as one of the devil in the heaven. And God has not even geteist. And I can the whole day, every year, with us on God, for us as a big nerd, a big star, a small heart. I have a full heart to the end So he's talking about a freshing floor of removing the skin in your life. But pulling out the juice. Also, if you don't get enough rain, if you don't get enough rain, you sang it this morning, but that rain, then the grapes sometimes turn sour. So if you have a spiritual drought in your life, if you had a year where you sort of had lots of attacks spiritually and lots of things happening in your family, like we all do, you feel all I haven't been irrigated so well this year. I haven't felt your spirit come over me. I see people dance. I see them sing. They're happy. But here inside me, it's pretty dry. I felt like that for many years, Mom. And you still go through ups and downs. But the Lord said this morning that He's promising He's going to pour out His spirit on His sons and His daughters. We sang it. Now I gave you the scripture in Job 2 where it's written. It says, Verse 28, and after all, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It covers it, he blankets it, all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Upon my main servants, men servants, and upon the maid servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And the spirit of God is like the latter rain. When you are like grafted into the wine stock Jesus Christ, you get lots of rain. But as you long sooner the rain was, that would it rain receive. But it did water and work on the sacred to me. But I found the rain that I stuck you from you. And I plant you over at home. And I move your stump and bring you a suit. Suit. And I did the first. I said, I want to live. So we've covered a couple. One was growing. One uh, was, was, was the wine, the, the grapes. And the second one, he talks about the oil. Joel talks about all three. He says, I see a freshing floor in the latter days. When do you see it, Joel? He goes, hang on. I see smoke. I see, I see, I see fire. I see the, the sun goes, loses its shine. The moon will turn to blood. Which can mean many things. They say if, if, if all, uh, just one of the big volcanoes in Earth would erupt, within a few days we would have the entire globe covered in ash and it will certainly block out the sun. Oh, it could be something like that, we just don't know. 
but then also in the morning through the ash, the, 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 the sun appears reddish, and, and the moon, even the moon, it looks like blood. Joel saw all that. Joel saw all that, but he refers to the threshing floor. The third one is the oil, the olive press. We've seen one there in the Capernaum, made out of stone. And you can actually see the wear of, 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 of the thousands of years that people have been threshing out in that compound. Ek het blombies geplant by die huis, en dat is baie mooi. <laughs> ek plik koop as die goed by die hoe is, en dat is so lekker. En, maar probeer nou die olijf van die boom af eet. <laughs> maar daar is die proces. Die Italianers wat die by Havie bly doen het goed, en ek koop die groot glas borrels. En dan gooi hulle hulle moed die en hulle goed daar en water en oil and I don't know what else and, and then they throw the olives in there and it fattens up, it soaks up the, the spices and everything that they throw in there One of, have you ever been to farmer's market here in Bunbury and walk through the section where the cheese and, and the pizzas and I like a pie so she doesn't want to die and then with the olive rack and then olive and she can like a quickies and she can make quickies I don't like the, the ones that pit it because they can make you go to the dentist again. Wait here for now. But you have to put the energy. I can see you now on the way from the line. Because look at the way out from the line. Where is the line? Wait, wait, let's see where we are today. Sorry, I was so afraid to like. So yeah. But being is uh, your child of God, you should learn how to eat olives because yes. it's one of the trees that will be in heaven. There might not be anything else. There's also the tree of life. Can I see it for the world for the year? I will see you. It's obvious that the Nazis are the Nazis. We praat van ons gaan eat in the world, but I praat van it. I saw that in the world, man, so I said, first the year. And that's obvious. You have to get work on scout. Broer en sister, wat, wat in die tuin van Eden gestaan het, en ek wil jy sien, kan jy dink? En ek weet wat dat in die mons gaan dink, en ek ook. En wat van hierdie boom, wat jy pa die aap wil te eet, en sy moes dink. En wat? Want daar is twee boom, en dit ek wil van kennis, van goed en kwaad, wat is die ander? Ek weet nie mooi wat hierdie staan waar nie, maar as ons twee boom, Wat van die woorden in de loop van die tijd? Maar ik is zeker bij de Bijbel. Dan gaan we ons dit. Als hij niet in de appel geeft, dan zou hij niet met zwarte gebaren hebben. Dan zou ons niet zonder gehad hebben. Dan zou die doorn zoals nooit gesteekt met die dubbelkies nemen. Wat die dan ook doorn is gevoel in de vrienden die zo weer happy. Hardloop en is so koel in die moor en hy voel die skaap dat ook die druk sonder so weg in die raam. Het is een mooie wacht gewees. Nee, weet jy wat, dit is nie die vrouwse skuld nie. Dit was die mense natuur, want sonder Jesus Christus in jou leven, sonder wat hy vir jou in die sonde gesterf het. As dit nie jy van was nie, was dit maar net een dag later, Adam. Nee, so. Controversie hier, ek dink dit moet ander weer. Maar ja, die Heere, die Heere is vir ons goed. So he brings about these, these three examples of the threshing floor in your life. And then he says that this will happen just before the end of days. Now as you know, Father Lewis, let it be the Father. Just the next chapter, he says, for behold, in those days, kijk uit en daar die dag. And at that time, when I shall reverse the captivity and restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Mense, is it nie, is die wereld nie, aan die brand nie? Alles draai deesdaal in Israel. 
alles draai daar boor. Hulle hou United Nations vergadering. Zuid-Afrika vat ons vir Israel hof toe. Dan is het hierdie land, dan is het daai land, dan is het al die nasies word net gestuur, het allemaal haat die weer. Maar oppas, ek het al baie vir die gesê, jy is volgende. Want Satan, hy is nie nou weinig achter die jood uit, hy is achter hom uit, maar hy is meer uit achter die vrou wat die kerk is en haar nakomende achter die wedergebore kinders van God. Want jy, soos wat jy vandag hier sê, en die geest van die Heere in jou is, jy is die alleen rede, hoekom die antichrist nie openbaar kan oorloog. Die skrif sê, en jy weet wie hom die antichrist teel, dit is die geestgevonde kinders van God. Dit wat in jou is, is so sterk, dat het Satan teruggaan. So hy gaan kom vir jou, hy gaan jou lampie sê, dit is kom ons vervolg sal word. As jy na die filmel camera so kyk, hulle sien jou een myl ver, dan sien jy daar as lewe, by wouter. It's like that in the spiritual world. You can be one person, praying on your lot, in Daniela, in Eton, on your acre, wherever you are, and your lamp shine, as long as it shines, it repels the darkness. Even if you are alone in your room and you're one person, it only took one Elijah amongst three or four hundred prophets of Baal. You've got the power of God in you. Keep on, keep on, keep on. And in those days, and at that time, I will gather all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. En die dal van Ramachidon. I will lay them, bring them down into the valley and there will I deal with them. And I will execute judgment upon them for their treatment of my people and of my heritage Israel one they have scattered amongst the nations and because they have divided my land. Because they have divided my land. Weet jylle dat Gaza deel was van Israel? Gaan kyk in die tyd van Salom, maar achter my bybel is al mooi keer vriendjes. Kyk wat er deel was in die tyd van David en Salom was deel van Israel, wat was Kanan gewees en hulle dit verdeel, because they have divided my land, during the Ottoman Empire. If you, who of you have watched the TV series Erdogan, very renowned Turkish uh, series, excellent, it's true, it's history. But during the Ottoman Empire, the Muslims conquered big paths and parts of, of uh, Palestine and they after the Jews they came and conquered the land and they built it there on the exact place where Abraham took the knife to offer his son on the exact place where King David stood and he saw the angel mowing down hundreds and thousands of people because he counted Israel and to a bit and say, it is jammer here to say the year and the stem and the year and the engel stop and to the engel stand and to stand there up the temple back up the place where Abraham and his son were offered and in that same place if you read the Quran it does not say that Abraham uh, wanted to offer his son Isaac. It says Abraham wanted to offer Ishmael. Hey? This is what Satan do. I fear some of the geschiedenis yield them all out. I fear for Isaac yield them all out. And the geschiedenis I guess is Ishmael. And that's not done. But that's what they do. And so they build the dome of the rock, the golden. Muslim temple mm. on the Temple Mount. 
That's why there shall never be a two-state solution. Because that place is built where the Jews will build their temple. I'm waiting for a big bomb. Something's going to flatten that thing before they can build a temple, right? It will happen. And then there will be war. Because if they blow that place up, that's all that. But that's what he works on the NSA. The Nazis saw all track the Israel. Probably when that happens, not sure. Something will trigger them, but you can already see around you at this very day how it is happening around you. I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley. And there I will deal with them and execute judgment upon them for treating my people bad. And for my heritage Israel, one they have scattered among the nations. Who feel you and I did a frustrate? Who did a weg fat and train it? How many people were gas? Where are we? I just don't know. I can not hold along here. I can not hold you. I know I'm one by heart. And the Bible says, for you that Jesus leave him. And an elk in. But I'm angenehm. And omdat hy mag gegee. Weet wat hy mag gegee? Jesus. Om een kind van Abraham te word. Een kind van my te word. En jou wat in die naam van Jesus. En die woord van die Heere sê net so, punt vir punt, komma vir komma, en daar sal baie aankom, van die noorde, die oorde, die suid en weste, en dan sal saam Abraham met Isaac en Jacob ansit aan die tafel van die koninkrijk. Dit weet jou hand so, sê Heere, ek is deel af van hy. But I see his name. He's a kind of God. He is the old offer. And for they scattered my people amongst the nations, and they divided my land. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot. Do you know that during uh, the, the, the Holocaust, uh, Hitler, uh, some, sometimes there were long lines going to the ovens, to the gas chambers, but they would cast lots so people would have to stand in that line and some people would have stand in this line if you remember what I say now after church watch the Isaacs the, the Gator Gospel group you often have the Isaacs family on there it's a, it's, it's a Jewish family they seem beautiful and, and they their mother was actually in a, a, well, not their mother their, their grandmother was actually in one of the lines and she was in the, in, the, in the line, and her friend was in that line. And then her friend ran over because they were separated. And she crashed her in front of the soldiers. And he says, I want my friend to be with me. And they thought the soldiers would kill her because she did that. But they left her. That line went to the gas chamber. This line perceived. And this wonderful family that's been so, so blessed, uh, they came from that. They say that their grandfather, up to the day of his death, he loved potato peelings. <laughs> because that's all they had in the war. So they just kept eating it. They had a beautiful love. For they divided God's people and nations. They scattered them. And they cast the lots on my people. And they've given boys, boys, Jewish boys, to a harlot and have sold little girls for wine and then they drank the wine. Have you not read what happened October 7th? How many boys and girls were taken and then atrocious deeds done against them? The war is one full stop. But you have to look at the barbaristic methods what they did. I don't want to go into it. You can read in the Jerusalem Post the things they did. But that's what the Bible says. The hatred towards God's children moves the enemy to the next level. The Lord says, Yes, and what are you to me, O Tyrus and Sidon, and all the five small divisions of the Philistines, that is where Gaza is, it's the land of the Philistines, 
What are you to me? says to Gaza. Will you pay me back for the things she did against my people? Do I need your money? The Lord says to them. Do you think I need your money? He says, Even if you would pay me back swiftly and speedily, I will return your deed upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver of my temple, my gold, and you have carried into your temples and palaces my precious treasures. I read to you a few weekends ago where the Ark of the Covenant was taken captive by the Philistines and there was no one to protect the Ark. And they took it into the temple, the Philistines, into Dagon. And the morning they got there, Dagon was lying on his face. Thank God he can stand up for himself. He did not need no Israelite to protect him. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they took the very heart of God. And they paid a hefty price. And the next thing, cancers erupted all over the Philistines. Not just in their body. The Bible says in their private parts. So they could not multiply anymore. And they said, what is wrong? And they took it to the next temple. And the Dagon fell down and his hands fell off. And his head broke off. And soon they discovered, after six months, that the Philistines, we are all dying, the Bible says. They screamed out, just return this ark. And they put it on, on a new wagon. And they had to make images of gold, for those of you that weren't here, of their cancers. And they had to make images of gold, of the mice, of the plagues that hit them. And they put it on this wagon with the ark of the covenant. And they took two milk cows who had calves at the time. And I told you there was no way that a cow would leave her calf that's dependent on her. There's no way. And I took these two cows in front of the wagon. And the moment when they put them there, these cows started walking straight. They did not know no GPS. They did not have no Google Maps. They walked straight to the land of Israel. And they left their siblings behind. And the Philistine says, now we know that this is the ark of God because look what the cows did. They left the young ones. They walked straight. They don't know why. And now the Lord talks about the Philistines again. He says, swiftly and speedily I will return your deeds upon your head because you have taken my silver, you have taken my ark, you have taken my gold and have carried it into your temples and palaces, my precious treasures. And have sold the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem to the sons of Greece. During the October 7 massacre, a lot of the Jews that were taken captives were sold to other terrorist groups. Not just Hamas. It's history. It's also prophecy coming true. So that you may remove my children far from their border. It's amazing they were taken on the border. Behold, I will stir them up. I will stir my children up out of the places to which you have sold them to. And I will return your deeds of retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters in the hand of the children of Judah. And they will sell your children to the Sabaeans, to a nation far off. For the Lord has spoken it. Proclaim this amongst the nations. Prepare a war. Stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come to me. God will be waiting for them in the valley. What you ask for. And that's all our stand. Baase. Our stand for screen of Baase. And you will hear the rumble. And you will see him come mm. on the clouds of glory. And behind him, the Bible says, there's a magnitude that cannot be counted. The children of God. If your mom and dad is in heaven, he'll be there be behind Christ. If I die before this happens, I'll be there. And said, the Bible says that Christ will slay the enemies scattered in that valley with the sword of his mouth. And the word of the Lord says, Daad die dag, as jy kind van God, sal jy oorwin, 
Je zal zien hoe God die vijand verslaan. Die heeft die woord van jouw getuigenis. Wat is getuigenis? Mijn getuigenis van al die zeer, van al die hartzeer, van al die jaren strijd wat jij moest dragen. It's there for a purpose. Thank God, not just spoilers, and say, Jere, I thank you for the slaves that I can give you. And it's not your character, it's not your durf, it's not your mood, Christ the Jere. It's not your mark, it's not your lexo. And as you live in here, you will give me the word of the Jere, and then you will go with me. Paulus sê, ek dra in my die merke van hier die evangelie, hoeveel hou het ek op een nacht ontvang, hy het om geslaan, hy het om gespied, hy het om een klippe dood gegooi, maar ek dank die Heere die geest van God, wat nie beperk is na die sterfte van die lichaam nie, het in Paulus ingevaar, nadat hy gestenig is, he was lying on the floor, stoned to death, but the spirit of God just went into him, and he raised him up, and thus the Bible sê, that you shall not be held to the grave, but greater is he that's living in me than he that lives in me in this world. Do not fear him that can kill the body, but fear God who can cast the body and your soul into hell. It's coming. Prepare a war, the Bible says. I'm hasty, I'm nearly done, I'm nearly done. Hasten and come all nations round about. Come on around about, gather around and assemble yourselves. There you, O Lord, will bring down your mighty ones. He will bring down his mighty ones. The Lord will bring down his mighty ones. He's going to bring the angels of heaven. But he's also going to bring us. If we are there at the time. He's also going to bring us. Your mighty one. Abraham will be there. You will see David. He will be there. You will see Elijah. You will see John the Baptist in his robe. You will see all the kings of the past. And you will look at them and think and think that they were shining and, 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 and haughty people and like the Pope and like the kings of this earth, they're not like that. They are humble like me and you, but they are full of character, full of scars. And they will come down and we will be there, all the mighty ones, and we will gather. And we will view the very last battle. And the Bible says God will whistle, call to all the birds of this earth. And he shall gather all the birds of this earth, and all the birds will fly to Israel, and then start to circle, and the Lord shall slay the armies, and the Bible says the blood will be up to the heights of the chins of the horses, and he will say to the birds, it is finished. Do you know why God will torment Satan and his demons forever and forever and forever, not just burn them up? It is because they have no mercy. How do you look in the eyes of a baby and kill her and her? How do you repetitively, when you know something is wrong, keep doing it? And that's what it's like. You don't care if he kills babies. <coughs> because everyone he kills, he kills the baby that's created to the image of God. He's pure evil. Mm -hmm. There are some people that just don't have rewards. And God will not like them. But you've got to know your enemy. You've got to know he's out there, cursing you at this very moment. Driving past here, every Sunday morning, cursing this assembly. They are out there, the witches, the warlocks. You don't want to know about them, but they are out there. But you, child of God, are spiritually strong. You've got to be awake and know your enemy. And know that you are sealed by the presence of God and by the anointing that He cannot touch you and not one hair of your head shall fall on the ground unless it's the will of God. You shall only go when it is your time to go. And not a day before that or a second before that. You do not fear the enemy. You just need to know Him. And call out and live out your calling. Because the harvest is ready as by a sinner. 
om in te vind, en broer en sister, as hulle nie hier sit nie, glo my, hulle sit daar buiten. Kom ons doen net ander wat ons doen, staan net op jou voete, dat hy is die Heer is in hand. I just said it, the Lord shall say, put in the sickle. For the harvest is right, verse 13, I must be open on this leaf. Come, get down and tread the grapes. For the wine press is full, the vats are overflowing, for the wickedness of the people is great. Yeah. Christ shall trot on the wine press himself in the valley where Armageddon will take place. For the wickedness of the people is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall go dark and the stars will withdraw their shine. The Lord will thunder and he will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people and a stronghold for the children of Israel. So shall you know, you shall understand and realize that I am the Lord your God, mm -hmm. dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy once again. He talks about after the battle. And strangers and foreigners, not born in the family of God, shall no more pass through them. And in that day the mountains shall drip with fresh juice of the grapevine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the brooks and the river beds and the river beds of Judah shall flow with water, and the fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord. He saw the throne of God. Because the Bible says in Revelation, under the throne of God, out comes the river of life crystal clear and it flows around the tree of life and the Bible says on the side of it there's streets of gold where on which we shall walk and you shall see this crystal clear river and the, and the tree of life and you shall hear the sounds of angels singing and you shall sing and you shall look upon one another and say oh, can you it can you look at it I made it we made it praise the Lord by his grace he saw a little bit of heaven here, Joel. I'm finishing up. There will be a river, a fountain that's come forth from the house of the Lord. But Egypt shall be in desolation, and Eden shall be a desolate wilderness, for their violence against for their violence against the children of God because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But you shall remain and be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem shall be from generation to generation. And I will cleanse and hold as innocent their blood and avenge it, blood which I have not cleansed, held innocent, and avenge for the Lord dwells in Zion. Heavenly Father, thank you that we know that the day is coming clear, the day is coming near. For the older people, it might come quicker than for the younger ones, but not necessarily. Father, we can leave this building, and if you decided that it is our time, it will be your time. Or tomorrow morning we could wake up, and the rapture might take place. So that we will be the, the multitudes that come behind you in the valley of Joseph. You, you might have already taken us home by then. But all we're asking, Lord, is so we can be ready. Thank you for your unfading love. Thank you that we are on the threshing floor. The Bible tells us that your heart is the threshing floor. And the Lord wants to produce the fruit of your heart. He cleanses our hearts. He helps us this morning. Thank you for sealing your children this morning with your anointing and the Holy Spirit, Lord. Help us to be ready. Let us draw nigh in your will. Protect us and guide us, Lord. And bring us together once more when we gather in your name. Amen. Why don't you believe, sister?
die Heere sien vir u, gesien het 